Second intrinsic parameter is water activity. Water activity is not the same as moisture content. What is moisture content? Moisture content is the gram of water per 100 gram of food in percentage. It can range from 0 to 100%, right? 100% is for pure water. Pure water has 100% of moisture content. Water activity, how is it determined? It's determined by the vapor pressure of food divided by the vapor pressure of pure water measured at the same temperature. Like this is how they do. They have a closed chamber and here they put pure water. Water in the, in the cup here will evaporate. Liquid water evaporate into vapor and the vapor that's present in the air here, we generate a pressure, we call it P0. This is the vapor pressure of P water. Now they do the same for food. Food then contain water and other components, the soil component and so on. Water in food also evaporate and then the vapor here, we generate a pressure called P. Okay, vapor pressure of food. Food contain the soil component, they hold, they link with water and it's become more difficult for the water to evaporate. More difficult for water to evaporate means that the P here should be lower than or maximally equal to the vapor pressure of P water because more difficult for the water to evaporate. And then, so water activity will range from minimum zero to maximum one. This is a range of water activity. This is a range of moisture content. Water activity indicates the availability of water. Okay, like if water is free or not free. Uh, availability of water for microorganism to grow. Microorganism to grow, they need water, and that water sh should be available. If there is water, but strongly bound water, they cannot take it, then they cannot grow. So it talk about availability for, for water, for them to grow, for the chemical reaction to occur. The reaction also need oxygen to occur. For the enzymatic reaction to occur. All the changes, they need water. They need available water to occur. And then this is how you call it as determined by water activity. So if you look for example, here you have a sample of dry milk powder. Milk powder of 7% moisture content and you have soybean, soybeans of 11% moisture content. Which sample will spoil faster do you think? If you look at moisture content, you may think that the soybean will spoil faster because it has higher moisture content. But actually in this case, the milk powder spoils faster because even though it has lower moisture content, but the water activity here is higher than the water activity here. Because 11% of water here is strongly bound water strongly bound water that link strongly to the components to the food components and it's not free it's not free it's not available it cannot evaporate because it's strongly bound not free so it will be very stable but for the milk powder if five percent of moisture content then it's very stable because this strongly bound water but we have now extra two percent and this water is quite free quite available so higher ac water activity and then these changes will occur faster these changes also occur faster and then the samples by faster okay now we go back here so in order to extend the cell line of food products, then we need to lower the water activity. How to lower the water activity? By dehydration, by drying. Okay, when we 
dry the food material we can store for a longer time because we reduce water activity the other way to do is by adding solids like sugar and salt you add solids you also reduce water activity the third one is by lowering temperature for example freezing when we do freezing we convert liquid water into ice ice is similar like bound water in ice the water liquid the water is crystallized into solid linked together they are they are bound together strongly and become like bound this is why water activity of frozen food is also low okay so now three measure how to do drying adding solid or freezing and now i will just explain a little more detail here when we add solid there are two effects not only when we add sugar or salt it's not only that is we reduce water activity but also is we increase another value is increase osmotic pressure osmotic also increase a lot osmotic pressure and these two parameter changes simultaneously inhibit or kill microorganism okay for example if you have a bacteria cell here if you add sugar or you add salt a lot of salt if you add a lot of salt the osmotic pressure outside is very high and then water inside the bacteria cell will go out because outside you have more dissolved component the water will lose the cell will lose water and then after a while the cell will be shrink shrink like this and then the cell may die uh, because they cannot compensate for the difference in, in in chemical potential in osmotic pressure like this okay this is the way to preserve food that our forefather applied for a long time already for example they add salt into anchovy into fish we call they do they do salted fish they add sugar into fruit uh, into uh, some fruit salt into some vegetable sugar into vegetable just to preserve it for a long time because how they can preserve because they lower water activity they increase osmotic pressure okay that's how they do right so if we look at water activity now most of spoilage bacteria will stop growing when water activity is below 0.9 most of spoiled yeast stop growing when water activity is below 0.88 and most of spoiled moles will stop when water activity is below 0.8 if we look at this now we will see a similar trend in the case of ph and here the case of water activity that mole is the most tolerant to low water activity means mold can grow in dry condition for dry products like dry beef dry fruits normally you see mold grow or even bread you eat in the morning bread is quite dry but after several days the mold can grow because mold see they can grow in at low water activity and then the second most tolerant is yeast and then bacteria when the food is somehow dry most of bacteria cannot grow anymore okay so up to now we already know that if the p if the food is sour or low ph if the food is dry then we should not worry about bacteria okay now we look here again we see the word most doesn't mean that all not all eh? but there are some exception group here there's some exception some bacteria which belong to this group is called halophilic bacteria halophilic means which love to live at high salt concentration then they can grow at here down to water activity of euro per 75 and normally this bacteria grow in salted fish for example 
in making fish sauce, for example, then this bacteria can grow. And then the mold, <clears throat> some mold, we call them serophilic. Serophilic means which love to live at dry condition. Nắm móc ưa khô hạn. Yeah. Cái này là vi khuẩn ưa mặn. Nắm móc ưa khô hạn. Then this mold can grow at water activity of 0.61 minimally. And yeast. Yeast osmophilus mean with love to live at high osmotic pressure. Nắm men ưa áp sức thẩm thấu. Then can grow also at water activity of 0.61. This yeast are suitable for making alcohol from sugar. So you add sugar to the fruit, then these yeast can grow because they love to live at high osmotic pressure. They can produce alcohol, for example. Okay, now we look generally here. And if the water activity is below 0 0.6, then no microbial growth. And this value is called critical water activity. Remember this value because you will see in the exam. Okay? What critical water activity is 0 0.6 because if you dry a food which is lower than this value, theoretically or virtually, no microbial occur. Microorganism cannot grow anymore in that dry product. Further here, you could see that the minimum water activity value that this bacteria, you see this bacteria can grow at high water activity. Lower than that, they cannot grow.